if you would, go to Isaiah, the sixth chapter. I preached last night at the River Church. Y'all, they're doing some powerful things. Many of you remember Pastor Josh Payne. He's preached here several times, and I preached there, and they are doing some amazing things, very similar to House of Prayer. And I, I was just so impressed with what God is doing there. And I love to link arms with my brothers and sisters in Christ. So I preached last night. I'll preach tonight. I'll preach twice Sunday morning, and then I'll go down the bayou to La Rose and start a series there at the House of Prayer La Rose campus, and I'm excited about that. Here's, here's, if you have time, I know some of you are very busy, but if you have time Sunday night, would you drive down to the House of Prayer La Rose and come help me support? I, I, I honestly, if I could speak old school language, I just want to start a revival there. I want to see people down the bayou who've just been devastated with Hurricane Ida get hit by another hurricane called the power of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost because Jesus is the answer. And so I'm going to work. I want you to work with me. I don't want to do this by myself. We can all do it together. And the church said amen. amen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted seated on a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple above him were seraphim each with six wings with two wings they covered their face with two wings covered their feet and with two they were flying and they were calling to one another holy 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 is the lord almighty the whole earth is full of his glory at the sound of their voices the doorpost and threshold shook the temple filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cry. This is Isaiah said, I am ruined. And the King James says, I'm undone. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people with unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. Acts, the second chapter says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of, say it again, like as of, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I want to preach on the subject mouth on fire I'm believing that a purging is coming to us but with that purging is going to come a power if we can acknowledge where we need to get things right God will do the hard stuff he will forgive us he will purge us and then he will empower us and we will become witnesses to everybody around I believe some of you are going to win more souls this year than you have ever discipled in the name of Jesus Christ I'm claiming it for you in Jesus name but you got to start speaking it you got to start saying it. I wish you'd throw your hands up right now and just start prophesying. Just start declaring over things you want God to do in 2022. God, do it like you want to do it in the name of Jesus. Set our mouths on fire, God. Set our families on fire, Lord, with the power of the Holy Ghost and fire. Don't let us be dormant in sin, God. Don't let us go to sleep in sin, but wake us up with hot coals from the altar, God. Wake up our spirits and our souls, God that we would not be complacent, but we would be set on fire with the Holy Ghost. And everybody in agreement with me say, in Jesus' mighty name, put your hands together and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As you're seated, tell somebody close to you. In fact, tell three people, get your mouth on fire. Whew. 
feel that, I feel something in here. God is doing something. Your mouth is a powerful weapon. Your mouth can do good or it can do harm. Your mouth can set things in order or can set things to chaos. Your mouth was given to you as a weapon. But Satan wants to use it as his weapon. And you have a choice to use it for God or by default it will be used for Satan. Your mouth cannot be used both for God and for Satan. It cannot curse and give life. You can't cuss all week long and then come praise God on Sunday. You can't gossip all week long and then worship God with your mouth on Sunday. It doesn't work that way. Can't come here on first Thursday talking about praise the Lord if, if right before you got here, you chewed somebody out at work. You gotta keep your cool. Temperament means everything because we've, we, we've gotta use this weapon with more diligence. And more discipline. And look, we all have a little bit of self-control issues that God is dealing with us about, I'm sure. If I can confess, since it's just us and the internet. Somebody wouldn't let me get over in downtown Thibodeau, which is now like a metropolis. I don't know where all these people came from, but traffic is bad. And I was trying to get over in the left lane, uptown, down Canal. And this person wouldn't let me. And I got aggravated. And I went. <laughs> so if that was you, I want to apologize in front of everybody. <laughs> and I got so embarrassed the moment I did it, I was like. <laughs> See at House of Prayer, Sundays at 9 and 11. Self-control is a real issue. I, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I know that until you get in the presence of God, your sin's not going to be properly dealt with. I feel the Holy Ghost right now for some reason. I feel like too many of us are trying to discipline our lives not to sin before we really get in the presence of God and let God eradicate our sin. Because before you can discipline your life, you've got to be set free. Before you can decide what's right and wrong, you've got to be set free through the power of the blood of Jesus. You can't get good enough to get God. You've got to let God touch you in a way where you are permanently delivered from sin and shame. And he wants to do it today because too many of us are living in the bondage of addiction and affliction. God is telling me that if you can get in his presence, he would touch you in a way that would truly deliver you. He's telling me, he's urging me and pushing me. He's saying, if my people would just humble themselves and let me deal with their issues, I would do what they have not been able to do for themselves. You've been trying to do three steps to healing and five steps to no more alcohol and seven strategies to have a better marriage. Let me tell you, until you get in the presence of God and he burns that stuff off of you, you're not gonna really be delivered. But I'm telling you, if you choose to get in the presence of God and humble yourself, he'll fight your devils for you. He'll forgive your sin for you and set you free. How many of you know what I'm talking about? God knows how to set you free. Slap your neighbor and say, you can get free tonight. Just giving you an excuse to hit the person you came to church with. Isaiah, it was, he was intentional to say it was the year that King Uzziah died and I was in the temple. Uzziah was a family member of Isaiah. And Uzziah was a good king, but he had passed away and things were coming. It was a, it was a not so great of a time because pain 
and suffering was coming. Sin was beginning to abound. And he was in a discouraging place. But he says, I was in the temple. There's something to be said in a moment of crisis for the people who seek the Lord instead of run from God. There's people who've lost loved ones and there's people who just got a divorce and there's people who's been cheated on and there's people who've been abused and there's people who lost their jobs and there's people who caught COVID. But I'm telling you right now, you still got in the temple and it means something to God because God's people are gonna end up in the house of God no matter what's coming against them. And he said, it was the year that King Uzziah died and I saw the Lord, I was in the temple, and I saw the Lord high and lifted up. He saw Jesus, and when he caught a glimpse of Jesus, it did something to him. Religion can't change you. God has to change you. You see, I'm noticing that I'm talking to Christians who've been living for God for a long time, but they're not acting like they've been living for God for a long time because Satan has convinced the church that you could strategize your way to heaven and attend church your way to heaven, but you're gonna have to see Jesus or you're not gonna make it. But for those of you who look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, you're gonna make it because he's gonna fight your battles for you. I feel like he's coming here tonight to fight somebody's battle in your family and in your home and in your mind. God's coming with a big sword saying, get back devil. They belong to me. I don't know why I'm screaming, but I'm excited. He was in the presence of God because that's where it really happens. And he saw the Lord the train of his robe filled the temple. That was every time a king had a victory, they say they would sew on more parts to his train. God had so many victories that it took up the whole place. You're not serving the kind of God who doesn't know how to win battles. He's been defeating the devil since the devil decided to rebel. Satan's got nothing on God. You're worried about the economy and the state of the world and addiction and all the thing that Satan is doing. Satan ought to be worried about what God is doing because this place couldn't even contain the power and the victory. I feel like shouting. It couldn't even contain. My God has never lost a battle. My God has never forsaken a loved one. My God has never turned down a repentant sinner. My God has never met a a devil he couldn't take care of and he's not about to start right now he's a good victorious God you ought to take a praise break right now come on if he's giving you a victory celebrate it right now somebody might get their victory from your celebration mm. that's why I have to praise him because my mouth testifies what's going on in the spirit. See, Satan testifies through the world, but we testify through our mouth. Your mouth tells you who you've been spending time with. If you've been listening to filthy things, your mouth is going to say filthy things. If you hang out with filthy people, your mouth's going to if you think filthy thoughts, your mouth's going to tell on you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you can get your life bubbling over with Jesus, your mouth is going to testify to deliverance. And it's going to start speaking with fire. It's going to catch on fire. And it's going to burn some stuff up. And every place the devil thought he could occupy, all of a sudden, a tongue of fire is going to come out and burn him out of there. Because the Holy Ghost and fire is alive in you. And so he was in the presence of God and he saw his sin. You really won't see your sin until you see Jesus properly. I feel like the Lord is prompting me to tell some of you that you're judging yourself through opinions but not the presence of God. And we find people who tell us we are okay but we're not really okay. We tell people we're a good people.
people tell us we're a good person, but good people don't impress God because our goodness is like filthy rags to God. Does not impress him. He's not up there saying, these people are really good. No, no, no. And he's saying some of us are deceived because we have felt our condition through our own opinions and eyesights and experiences. And we compare ourselves amongst ourselves, and that is not wise. We say, well, at least I'm not so bad as so-and-so. Well, at least I hadn't done what so-and-so did. And we think we're okay. And God's saying, you haven't been in my presence, so you can't see your own sin. The reason why we could just so blatantly sin and not even realize it is because we're not getting in the presence of God. But those of you who do get in the presence of God, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you get in the deep presence of God and all of a sudden something surfaces in your spirit and you don't like what you see because you know it's unclean. And Isaiah got in the presence of God and he said, whoa, whoo, I am a man of unclean lips. Of all the things he could have said, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell among a people with unclean lips. And the angel, the seraphim, which is a celestial being, it's the only time this word is mentioned in the Bible, it means fiery ones. The fiery ones took a hot coal and came and put it on his mouth to purge him because the only way we're gonna be purged of our sins is from the altar of Jesus Christ where he was sacrificed. We gotta get back to the cross and get our lives right with God. The blood of Jesus is the only thing that's gonna set you free. It's the only power strong enough to break an addiction that you have tried every strategy in your life to conquer. I'm telling you, there are people in this room who used to be prostitutes, who used to be drug dealers, who used to be drug addicts, who used to steal, who used to lie, who used to fight, but they found their way to the cross and the blood of Jesus washed them clean and broke every stronghold and chain that Satan had over their life. I'm talking about the power of the blood of Jesus. And he washed them. And then all of a sudden, he had power. And he said, who shall I send? And Isaiah said, send me. I'll be the witness for you, God. Because you purged me, I'll go say your purging words in the presence of God. Fast forward and we get to the New Testament and now a new covenant is about to start. The church was launched in Acts 2. Don't believe anybody who tells you something different. The church was launched in Acts 2 because that was the time that God had appointed as Pentecost. It was connected to Passover. Pentecost means 50, 50 days after Passover. Passover was where Jesus died. Remember the lamb that was slain in the Old Testament where they applied the blood to the doorpost and the death angel passed and God set them out of, out of Egypt. He set them free. Well, that was a typology of the blood of Jesus Christ. He's the sacrificial lamb for you. And when the blood is applied to you, your heart and apply to your life the death angels got to keep moving and you are set free so Pentecost is connected to Passover you can't have a Passover and not a Pentecost and too many church people have Passover but no Pentecost but it was at Pentecost that tongues of fire hit the place and now their mouth was set on fire they didn't just have their sins forgiven but now they had mouth on fire they could be a witness for God they could prophesy they could praise God because their mouth was on fire Whew. you got to get your tongue on fire. When you, got when you get baptized with the Holy Ghost, your mouth gets hot. And sometimes there's a powerful thing that you can say, and you don't even know when you're going to say it, but God will just inspire you, and it'll come out. And the first time you're usually baptized with the Holy Ghost, you speak in an unknown tongue. And that freaks some people out. But let me tell you something God was talking to me about. 
This is why I believe he was showing me one of the reasons God chose speaking in tongues. Because speaking in tongues freaks people out. I can't tell you. We, I can't tell you how many people want to talk to me and it's always about the same thing. Do I have to speak in tongues? Because it's weird to the natural mind. When you talk about speaking in tongues, it just feels a little different. And so Satan, I believe, I believe the Lord was giving me this revelation. You can take it, you, you just testify in your spirit how you feel about it. But what's going on is, is we have religion now that's figuring out a way to do church with no supernatural. So we attract people with natural. We have good buildings, good programs, good talkers, good communicators, good things for your kids, things for your, for your students. All of that is great, but that's not enough. We've got a program for addicted. That's good. That's not enough. We got the best mics and speakers and acoustics. That's good. That's not enough. We've got screens and high technology. That's good, but that's not enough because you can do every single one of those in the natural. But the one thing you cannot do in the natural is get in the power of the Holy Ghost and fire. It is the supernatural. So he's got to do something that takes you out of your natural into the realm of the supernatural and when you get it he sets you on fire I wish you would take a praise break right now if you want to be set on fire you ought to give God a praise right now and say God let the fire burn in me let it burn let it burn let it burn I don't want church where everything is natural. I want the supernatural. We can't get people delivered with the natural. We need the supernatural. I can't heal your family with the natural. Only God can heal your family with the supernatural. I can't break addiction off of you in the natural. Only God can break addiction off of you in the supernatural. Our country doesn't need the natural. It needs the supernatural. Set your mouth on fire. It's got to burn in you. It's got to be awkward at times. He said, you're a peculiar people. Look at your neighbor and say, you're so strange. you just so strange. God wants peculiar people, not natural people. I'm not saying be weird for weird's sake, but if you're gonna operate in the supernatural, it's gonna get a little peculiar sometimes. You might speak in tongues and just people just feel like. You might prophesy and you're like, who told you that? You might lay hands on the sick and they get healed and people wanna know, who's your doctor? You might be in a wheelchair and God would lift you out of the wheelchair. And they're like, who's your physical therapist? You see, peculiar things happen when the Holy Spirit begins to move. They didn't have mics. They didn't have buildings. They didn't have programs. They didn't have denominations. But the Holy Ghost spread like wildfire because God doesn't need anybody's help. He's, all, he's good all by himself. God, I feel like I can preach. If you set your mouth on fire, if you could let God purge your heart, it would purge your mouth. Because he says if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, you would be saved. The issue is the heart. The issue with us is our hearts. And God's talking to us. He's dealing with us. He brought situations in the last two years that you can't get healed from in the natural. They created a vaccine and people were so excited. They said the vaccine's gonna deliver us from evil. Before that, they gave us the quarantine. 
They said the quarantine is going to flatten the curve. Still dealing with the curve. What are they going to say next is going to deliver you? It's not going to work. Until our hearts repent and we say, God, I'm sorry for living my life for this world. I'm sorry for indulging in sin and shame and all kind of stuff. And, and I'm going to say this. I'm sorry for talking about people with our mouths. Because when he said he was a man of unclean lips, he was, he was testifying of the greatest sin is with your mouth. Because it is your weapon. Show me a struggling marriage and I'll show you two people who have mouthed off to one another. Who let stuff get in their heart and it came out of their mouth and permanently wounded. People talking about what you said 20 years ago because that's the power of a mouth. Kids, 42 years old, can't get over what dad told them when they were 12 because that's the power of a mouth. People won't go to church because of what a preacher said to them 32 years ago. That's the power of a mouth. But when a heart says, I'm tired of being bound in this sin, I'm sick of drowning in my stuff. I see the Lord tonight and I want to make sure my life belongs to him. He's going to come down and he's going to purge you with his blood. And that fire is going to burn in your life and you're going to lose it in the fire. It's going to get lost in the fire. I believe some of you are going to go home tonight and the addictions you came here with are not going home with you because the power of the Holy Ghost and fire. It's a choice. It's a choice. The Lord said this to me. I feel like he said this to me. I've never seen anybody get the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues and after say, I regret that. Not one time. I've been in church 43 years. My parents started taking me to church when I was 11 months old. I was strung out on milk. And would mess my diapers consistently, but the Lord delivered me from all of that. That's why you need to come to house of prayer. <laughs> I have never seen anybody in 43 years after they got the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues say, I don't want it. I've heard people who never got it say, I don't need it, but that's a lie but I've never heard anybody who got it say, I don't want it anymore. When you get the Holy Ghost and you get it for real, nobody's gonna have to tell you you got it. You're gonna know you got it because your life's gonna be different and your mouth's gonna be set on fire and things are gonna be different from this day forward. And that same Holy Ghost that was there in Acts, the second chapter, is here tonight, right now, through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I wish you would stand to your feet and say, I want it, God. I want a renewing in it. I want it for the first time, God. I want you, Jesus. I want you. I want you. I want you. Mm. I'm sorry I preach like a madman, but I'm just so disturbed. I'm so disturbed by what's being called experiences with God. I don't find it in the Bible. The stuff we're doing and thinking and believing, it's not biblical. It's parts of the Bible missing the other parts. He didn't just say, don't add to the word. He said, don't take away from the word. When we take away things, we lose all of it. It's unacceptable to God. And this is what I'm preaching to you, house of prayer tonight. And everybody watching online. There's stuff in our lives that don't belong there and it's hindering the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the Bible warns us to grieve not the Holy Ghost. And sometimes we have grieved the Lord with our sin. Now I'm gonna tell you something the Lord's been really dealing with me about. 
we are focusing on sin as a behavior but we forget that sin is a condition I have seen people who would never cuss never drink never smoke never shoot up never hurt somebody never get a divorce but could hold a grudge with the best of them could hate could gossip easy no problem let's talk about that can you believe that and God is sick of it because it's unclean lips you think that your offense justifies your gossip it's a sin and it's hindering the Holy Ghost in some of your lives I want to say something to you you can get the Holy Ghost tonight you can be baptized with His Spirit but it's not going to happen if you're not fully surrendered if you have any reservation you will tell on yourself and you will not get it but if you want it tonight's the night for you because God will give it to you the moment you go all in for him but you got to want it because if you don't want it you're not gonna get it but I feel right now like God's gonna give it to some people so I'm just gonna take a bold step of faith if while I was preaching you got convicted in your heart and you're like my goodness there's sin in my life and I want forgiveness and I want healing and I want deliverance. I want the power of the Holy Ghost to come in my life and I want the Holy Ghost in fire. I want you to come stand up here in the front and I'm gonna pray with you. Be willing to come alone. Don't expect people to come with you. Come if you want it. You have to want it. You have to want it. You have to want it.